Let's talk all things NFL playoffs right now, and let's head out to the HRNP guest line. We bring on the great Trey Wingo, who's kind enough to join us. Trey now with Caesar Sportsbook, the 33rd team, Pro Football Network, and he's the host of the Half Forgotten History podcast. Trey, it's Jake, Cody, and BK. Thanks so much for a couple minutes today. Hope all is well. Hey, guys. Good to be with you. How are you? We're doing well, Trey. So we want to get to the playoffs with you, but just want to get your thoughts on the Texans and their head coaching search. Uh, D'Amico Ryans is the name that this fan base here in Houston is the most excited about. It's the name that it seems like uh, th- that will galvanize this fan base the most. What are your thoughts on D'Amico Ryans, and do you think he'd be a great head coach? I think D'Amico Ryans will be a great head coach, but I'm not sure anyone's going to be a great head coach in Houston. Um, we're, we're in the spin cycle here, guys, right? You've had, what, five coaches over the last three year, three seasons, if I'm not mistaken? Is that it? Or whoever's coming in will be the fifth head coach, right? Uh, Phil O'Brien, Romeo Cornell, uh, Tully, and Lovey, mm-hmm. all in the last couple of years. So you're looking for your fifth. Uh, <laughs> and it's just, that's a mess, man. And the organization got to find a quarterback. They've got to find some stability. They've got to find uh, reasons for people to want to play there. It goes way beyond the head coach in Houston right now. Trey, don't you think a guy like D'Amico, though, would, would – at least take a step in the right direction towards some of those things, the stability, the leadership, the the engagement that he would bring. It's better than, you know, low bar to clear, but it's better than what they've been hiring. Well, I, I mean, I, I, I guess, but, I mean, my question then would be, how do we know what it could have been for the last two head coaches? Because Cully was basically told, you can't have your franchise quarterback. Go get him, guys. Uh, and then Lovey was the last-minute hire because, they kind of messed it up, and they were going to do something else, and that wasn't going to work. And I thought, you know, results matter. I get it. But they were in every game they played. You know, they weren't ever blown out. Uh, and, you know, if they had had real personnel, uh, I think the record could have been pretty good. Uh, you know, they took the Chiefs to overtime. The Cowboys needed to last, what, score on the last play of the game to win. The Chiefs, I mean, the Texans rolled over for no one this year. Um, it, again, it goes way beyond. Uh, the head coach. Uh, there's a million things that have to change in that organization. Trey, what do you make of the whole Sean Payton sweepstakes, and uh, what do you ultimately think he's worth? Obviously, a team who brings him in will have to trade for him. Uh, what type of deal would seem fair to you to acquire Sean Payton? Well, I think he's worth a lot. I mean, remember, when he went to New Orleans, New Orleans was terrible. Uh, you know, they'd just come off the, the Hurricane Katrina year. Uh, they played... Uh, what I think stadium, but games in three different stadiums that year. Their training facility and their weights went in a high school gym somewhere uh, for a while. He made them what they were with obviously with Drew Brees. The two of them made the Saints relevant. When I mean, you go look at the the history of the Saints franchise, pre Sean Payton and post Sean Payton, and it's kind of ugly. And uh, you know uh, that was that was the thing that got them going. So I, I think Sean Payton is worth. Uh, whatever anyone is willing to pay him, because I think he would be got to find a quarterback, obviously, but he's real good at that. And uh, I, I just think that he'd be worth whatever you could give up to get him. Trey Wingo joining us here on the HRMP guest line. With that being said, Trey, if the Texans traded the 12th overall pick and maybe another pick to get Sean Payton as their head coach, they gave him full art, uh, autonomy over drafting the quarterback and a lot of the big decisions. Would your perception of the Texans organization change? Yes, I would. Are they willing to do that, though? That's a great question, right? No doubt. And that's the debate that we've been having here in Houston, just if Sean Payton would even consider this job, given everything that's gone on. As far as the playoffs go, Trey, I want to get your thoughts on these divisional round games. What to you was the biggest takeaway from what we saw over the weekend? Uh, what I loved about the divisional weekend was we got the best four teams in football in in the championship games. And that happens very rarely, right? I mean, you look at who's playing – on uh, on championship Sunday, and it's the best four teams in football. And I, I don't think it's really close. I mean, the, the Chiefs have been consistent all year long. After a 4-4 four and four start, the Bengals have been phenomenal. Uh, San Francisco last loss in October. <laughs> you know, their last loss was Kansas City in October. Uh, and Philadelphia has been consistent all year long as well. What I love about the results of this past week is we got the best teams. And that's all you can ask for, right? That's all you can ask for is give us the best teams playing on the biggest stages, and, and we're going to have that on Championship Sunday, which is my favorite. It's my, Championship Sunday is, is more fun to me than the Super Bowl, and uh, I, I just think it's the most, it's the best day of the entire year 
and we got the best four teams playing. Trey, what do you do in Dallas if you're the Cowboys? It's a mess. I mean, you know, uh, uh, Dak, I've been a big proponent of Dak, but um, you, you can't do what he did. You know, and, and that interception when they were in the red zone, if you go back and look at it, T.Y. Hilton is wide open. And the 49ers tried to pretend like they were coming all on the left side. But at the snap, uh, the, the blitzer supposedly, you know, they drop back already and their back is turned. T.Y. Hilton is wide open. Like, that's a walk-in touchdown, and Dak never saw him. And, and that's why you saw the situation uh, on the sidelines with T.Y. talking to Dak when he tried to force it into C.D. Lamb. And I get it. C.D. Lamb's an unbelievable player. But if you have someone as wide open as – I mean, like, he'd still be running, okay? Like, nobody was near him. Um, and now you have the situation with, with Zeke's contract, uh, and I think he's probably played his last game as a Dallas Cowboy. The Pollard injury killed him yesterday. Uh, you know, they only had 21 rushing yards in the second half. Once Pollard went down, their entire running game went down. But they have committed a lot of money to Dak. They have to find a way to make it work. He's got to get better, and they've got to make sure they get better weapons around him because there's no easy solution there. Yeah, Trey, you talk about making it work. Uh, could there be a coaching change to try to make it work? I mean, Kellen Moore's gotten head coaching interviews before. Dan Quinn might be a head coach in the not too distant future once again. It's, you know, it's, obviously it feels like the Cowboys could use some personnel upgrades, but do you think they maybe need to do more than that to take the next step next year? Well, it was really disappointing because they played so clean Monday night, right? Dak was perfect. Uh, they had very few penalties. They managed once they got up big. They managed the clock well. You know, they had to deal with the, the disaster of Maher missing all those extra points. But you know, they did everything right. And then you go look at those those final sequences on Sunday. You know, even before the last sequence, which was just an epic disaster. Uh, you know, they they wasted way too much time to punt it away to San Francisco before the two minute warning. And then that final sequence, like Dak running around. Uh, you know, almost getting sacked for a safety in the end zone. That play took 11 seconds. Like, that's a three-second situation, okay? One, two, three. If it's not available, throw it away because time is more important than yards. You need to preserve time to try and find ways to get more yards. And they did it backwards. They were using the time to look for yards, and, and it, it just didn't work. And then that final play, I mean, <laughs> I mean come on. I mean, like, literally, every, everyone has, uh, as my good friend Scott Van Pelt called it, a pitchy, pitchy, woo-woo play. And theirs got tackled on the first reception. Like, that's almost <laughs> impossible to do. Hey, Trey, you said you think Zeke has played his last snap in Dallas. You don't think he's the next center for the Cowboys? <laughs> <laughs> well, not, a, not after he got a face full of a, a right L on that last play. I can promise you that. He, that was the dying cockroach block by Ezekiel <laughs> Elliott on that center play. We're talking with Trey Wingo. He does work with Caesar Sportsbook, the 33rd team, Pro Football Network, and he's the host of the Half Forgotten History podcast. He's with us here on the HRP guest line. Trey, looking at a, a team like the Buffalo Bills, they've been close. They've been knocking on the door the last couple of years, but they come up short again. What did you make of that game yesterday? More about Cincinnati dominating or the Bills losing at home in a critical spot? Well, first of all, let, let's go to the last part. Cincinnati absolutely dominated. Let, let's be clear. They were missing three-fifths of their starting offensive line. They rushed the ball for 172 times, averaging 5.1 yard, yards per carry. That makeshift line gave up one sack for minus two yards. They had two penalties for nine total yards, zero turnovers, and a 31st down. Let me, let me go to that last part, 31st down, okay? In their previous two wins combined, they had 33 first downs. Cincinnati played as clean a playoff game as I can ever remember. If they play like that, they're not losing to anybody. But I don't know if that is rep, uh, repeatable at all, like, you can't play that clean in two, three weeks in a row. It's just not possible. It was a stellar performance from top to bottom. Buffalo has got to learn that singles are okay. I mean, that's their biggest issue. You watch them play, they're always looking for the home run ball. They're always looking for big game Gabe and, and Stephon Diggs. And, and you know, they, just, they just weren't willing to take the easy stuff. Uh, and, I, and I think that Josh gets real excited sometimes in postseason. You know, look look at the way his demeanor is as opposed to, say, Mahomes or Joe Burrow. And, and you just get the feeling sometimes that he gets just all agitated and gets too ex- – he's got to calm down. He's got to calm down in those moments. They're a very talented football team that's had an amazing three-year run. But the grand total of that three-year run they've had is one appearance in a conference championship game. Look at what the, the Mahomes –
Bruins-led Chiefs have done. He's never had a road playoff game in his career as a starter, guys. Five straight years hosting the AFC Championship game. Conference Championship games and a Super Bowl, and he's only in his third season. The Bills have got to find a way to get better if they want to come close to what the Bengals and Chiefs are going to do on a yearly basis. Trey, it didn't feel like Philadelphia had to get too deep in their bag to take care of the Giants. What do you make of what that team is and what they possibly can do if they have to play, and they will be playing a much better opponent uh, in the NFC Championship game? Yeah, that divisional game to me was the look of a team that got healthy and had a bye week against a team that left it all on the field winning on the road in Minnesota. You know, Brian Dayball deserves a lot of credit because the Giants just aren't that good. I mean, they're not, you know. He got, they're basically the same unit or, quite frankly, offensively worse than Joe Judge's two years, and he got much better production. But they ran out of gas in that game. That, that, that to me, was evident. The Philadelphia Bigs just destroyed the Giants Bigs. You know, the Eagles have four guys on defense that have ten sacks. Okay, that's never happened before in the Super Bowl era. Lane Johnson came back. Guys, not only is he the best right tackle in football, he might be the best tackle in football. And that was a game of just, you know, I, I always say football is one wall of men trying to dominate another wall of men that allows everything else to happen. The Eagles just kicked the you-know-what out of the Giants on both lines of scrimmage, and it was, it was a dominating performance. Now, they're in for a much tougher test against the 49ers who have a pretty good offensive line at their own, and we all know what their defense can be. Uh, but this is going to be boy, this is going to be a game for the ages on Sunday. Trey, in ten seconds or less, what's your updated Super Bowl pick? Well, I started with the Chiefs, and uh, I'm I'm not wavering. Although the Mahomes ankle thing has me really concerned, and you know the Bengals, when Mahomes is 100, percent are three and zero against the Chiefs. So uh, until the Chiefs can find a way to beat the Bengals. I think the Bengals are probably the prohibitive favorites right now, but I started with Kansas City, so I'm sticking with them. Trey, thanks as always for a couple minutes of your time. Appreciate you coming on. You got it, guys. Take care. Trey Wingo joining us there on the HRMP guest line. You can check out his content with Caesar Sportsbook, the 33rd team, Pro Football Network, and his podcast, Half Forgotten History. Hey, you made it to the end of the video. Thanks so much for watching. If you liked what you saw, hit the like button down below, and of course, subscribe to my channel. And if you're a Houston sports fan, Listen to ESPN Houston 97.5 FM or 92.5 FM weekdays from 3 to 7 every afternoon.